Hello friends, thank you for joining me again today. Sorry, I, sometimes like this, you get a notification that says it's going to start in 10 minutes and then I start right away. Um, that's, that's the way it has to go sometimes. I have just a few minutes here to sneak in <clears throat> a quick broadcast, I hope, before I get called downstairs to dinner. And as you've no doubt already seen, I am calling this episode uh, Jumbo Jet Black Pencil. That's reference to, whoops, the letters worn off. Find, find one, there we go. Jumbo Jet Black, can you see that? Made by, distributed by Jerry Zatarama. So I've talked about it many times. And, uh, be doing looking at my photo reference here for for Ellie the dog there we go I've said this so many times before, so but just in case there's anybody new watching. Yes, it is very unconventional. This is not typical, not typical uh, oil painting to use to use pencil. Now the old fashioned, old fashioned traditional oil painting uh, often entailed um, doing a, a charcoal preferably a vine charcoal because that has no uh, wax in the in the makeup of the charcoal so therefore if you ever do a charcoal underneath a an uh, oil painting it should be vine charcoal um, <clears throat> but these pencils my use of pencils are not parallel to are not in the same uh, mindset as that as I often say as the way my the way my dad painted my dad was a good wasn't his job it was a hobby but he was a good um, hobby painter and he painted in a very you know mid 20th century traditional linseed oil turpentine and uh, charcoal sketch underneath the underneath the the painting, but this is not that. Uh, my use of pencils is very, very different. When when you do a, and I have a video that's fairly popular actually, quite a few people have seen it, much to my surprise. I have one video I did several years ago about doing a charcoal sketch underneath a, um, underneath an oil painting. And uh, when you use utilize that particular technique, Um, you do not expect, you do not want the, the uh, charcoal sketch to be visible at the end of the painting process, right? <clears throat> it's completely hidden sketch underneath the painting. And as you can probably tell, um, my use of these pencils is quite contrast to that. I do indeed very much want want these uh, marks, some of them, to be visible in the finished painting. Which ones, you ask? Well, <laughs> that's, that's not my, <laughs> whichever ones look good in, during the final edit phase, that, that's which ones. Um, and again, forgive me, I don't repeating myself. Uh, I, I say this so often, my pencil marks serve two purposes. <laughs> On the one hand, they, I am definitely using them to achieve, you know, to draw with, to achieve um, a degree of realism, similitude, accuracy, drawing. <clears throat> but you can probably tell, I hope, 
by the way that I'm moving, the way that I'm using the pencils, but that is very much a secondary purpose because the primary purpose of the pencils is they are, they are here uh, simply because I like the way the scratchy pencil-ish lines uh, interact with the smooshy, <laughs> if I may use that crazy term, with the smooshy uh, paint marks, all right? So the paint is smooshy, the lines are scratchy. And that is, that is a big part of, of what I'm after with the pencils. So I'm after smooshy, no, I'm after scratchiness. Not smooshy, scratchy. And usually the pencil stage, the pencil phase, usually doesn't take that long, as, as is the case, as you see here. I'm almost, I'm more than half finished. Um, it will take a little bit longer on the other painting if I have time to get to that in this broadcast because the other painting has many more uh, technical drawing issues, cars, buildings, and so on and so forth. Here, the great majority of this painting is um, just organic shapes, organic tree and foliage. These, these pencils are a great way to render uh, tree branches, as you can clearly see and probably imagine. And again, I, yeah, I trust you can discern by my manner, by the way that I'm moving, that I'm not terribly fixated on, on accuracy of drawing. That, that would be a correct observation. If it looks like I'm just kind of drawing crazy, except for the dog and a little bit of the house, if it looks like I'm to you like I'm just kind of drawing crazy willy-nilly, then you're seeking correctly. I, some other language, same, same thing in different words, I discovered some time ago that I think the, the pencils for me, and it's very unconventional, again, do not, high school students, do not take this to your high school art teacher and say, hey, aren't we supposed to use pencil when we're doing oil painting? <laughs> You'll get quite the look of scorn, I quite assure you. So this is unconventional. I don't, I didn't set out to be weird, it's just turned out that way. All right, I'm bas basically done. Um, and as the, as the painting exists right now, there is indeed too much in my opinion, there's too much pencil in that painting. But do not worry for a moment because I have s several layers yet to come, especially the, well, the next two layers in particular. Um, by the way, one of the nice things about these pencils is that they play very well with both water and oil. This whole canvas is very, very wet with liquid, medium liquid. And uh, one of the reasons I'm so tickled with these pencils is, as I say, they, they play very well with both, both of those media. Okay, give me just a minute. I need to take a quick picture of this, of this painting at this stage. I'm trying to document. What's going on here? All right, good enough, back to work. So same drill. Uh, let me pull. through this many times now let's take this these pictures down because the because the holder gets in the way and um 
Take just a minute to raise this painting up. I much prefer painting standing up, by the way, uh, until your legs and feet get sore. Then I prefer sitting down. <laughs> so the, the energy flows better, just like any athlete will tell you, any singer, musician will tell you, generally speaking. You know, your body functions better when you're in an erect posture. But then at some point, <laughs> um, all that goes out the window because, dang it, my feet are sore. Or whatever. And at that point, then, it's back to sitting down for a break. Once again, there's my reference. Very boring. White road, white car, white building, white clouds. So this painting could be called an exercise in white on white. And I'm looking now quite carefully, and this is still not, still not too late to make changes, especially with something as technical as, say, this vehicle, this car that I'm drawing. Um, I don't care, so to speak, whether people can tell what model it is, although I strongly suspect that somebody who loves cars, like, say, my youngest son, Cameron, who's a you know, that's just one of his interests and hobbies and so forth. Um, he enjoys cars a lot. So he would look at it and be able to identify exactly, probably, what, what model and year and make it is. I could care less about such things. Um, but I've learned that in, over the last, just the last couple of years, partly because of my son Cameron irritating me, provoking me um, that I, I've had to up my game, shall we say. I've had to take my rendering of cars much more seriously than, than I would than I used to. And that's been a, that's been a distinct uh, improvement to my painting in the last couple of years. He teased me mercilessly. Um, but I deserved it. It was it was an improvement that needed to be made. I don't care about cars, so I didn't care about rendering them very carefully. Um, that was a weakness. And I've since, I hope, remedied that situation to a, to a substantial degree. So once again, I'm looking at my reference I've got a bobblehead thing going on. My head's going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down as I look at my my photographic reference. Because yes, it is it is now quite important to me that I render things like this pretty pretty carefully. Now, careful and tight are two different things. In fact. Um, I haven't said this in, in a while, so it's, it's, it's about time I repeat it. Um, a couple months ago, I resolved um, to essentially never use the term loose painting. You know, that everybody uses that term, right? Not me, not no more. I've used it my whole life, but I plan not to use it anymore. If I do use it, you're welcome to call me on it and say, hey, you said you aren't music, because I still slip. Decades old uh, habits die hard. Um, I, I do not want to use the term loose, loose brushwork, loose painting, um, because I am convinced that that term messes up. Um, early journey painters because the the expression loose painting or loose brushwork I'm convinced perfectly 
to the to the untrained painter conveys the idea of inaccurate or loose drawing, so to speak, careless or inaccurate drawing. Okay, so the term and that is bad. No, 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 no. You do not want your drawing to be quote unquote loose or inaccurate. You do not. You want your drawing to be dead on. In the in the in my opinion, uh, you want your drawing. Okay, hang on a second. Yeah, it's a pentagon in the wheel. Five spoke, as many many wheels are. Now, the next step that I'm doing after this one, by the way, and I won't do it in this broadcast, because I expect to be called any minute, called downstairs for supper. We have guests. This is so often the case, happily. We have guests with us tonight, and so when I get called for supper, I'm going to have to go. Um, but the, the next thing that I am going to do after this is uh, drawing this image again. So in a sense, very much echoing what I'm doing right now, but instead of doing it in, in pencil, I'll be doing it with small brushes like like this size. I love these uh, Silver Grand Prix. By the way, silver brushes are the best brushes I know of. Um, I think the Rosemary Brush Company, but I think they're out of England, Britain, therefore even a little more expensive. You can buy them, but they're very good brushes. And no doubt there's some brushes out there that put all of these to shame, but I'm not aware of them. Uh, the best brushes I know in the common market are silver and Silver Grand Prix. Um, I sometimes feel very bad <laughs> about <laughs> the way that I abuse my brushes, unlike like Mark Carter, who takes such pristine care of his brushes. I'm an absolute Philistine, and I, I wish I weren't. I spend a lot more brushes than I would need to, but there you go. That's. I don't, I don't I don't know that I'm going to change in that regard. Okay, but what I'm going to do after drawing, as you see, I'm drawing right now with black pencil. The very next step in in my painting process is uh, drawing again with dark, transparent. I don't need to say that, do I? If it's dark, it's transparent. If it's transparent, it's dark. It's redundant. But I'm saying it for your benefit, just in case there's any new newcomers here. Dark, transparent uh, details, in, in, again, in paint this time. At the end of this stage, phase, right here, um, there will indeed be too much pencil in this painting. Not to worry. We have several more steps yet to come, during which the excessive pencil work will be diminished considerably. Now, having said that, on this particular painting, I do, in fact, want to be careful not to uh, overdo the pencil, partly because, and it's hard to describe why in this particular painting, well, the reason is, I alluded to it at the very end of my last broadcast, because this painting is really cooking. It is, you know, in a sense, everything I had hoped it would be um, at this point, and which is another way of saying it's mine to screw up at this point. It's mine to lose. Um, and so I want to go a little bit lighter than I sometimes do with the pencil. Hang on here. I printed out. I haven't used it yet at all in this painting, but I'm going to break it out right now. I printed out a detail of the the busiest part of this painting. I enlarged it. If I can, I wonder if I can. Yeah. Hang on. Let me put this right here. Oops. Over a little bit. There because I really wanted to be able to see what was going on in here. Not that I'm a slave, not that I'm required to copy it 
Um, no, but I am, I do want to capture the essence of it. So to be able to see it um, with some specificity is a very a definite advantage. And I almost always say when I'm when I'm drawing with pencils, you can tell by the way that I handle the pencils. You can tell that um, super accurate rendering is not my highest objective. Right? If it were, I'd be I'd be sticking my tongue up and then going like this. Right? I'm clearly not doing anything of the sort. So. My number one objective is, is fascinating texture. Number two objective is uh, capturing or rendering the, the image, the subject matter. And again, in case you've missed, oh boy, a whole bunch of chats going on here. Oh my goodness. Uncle, uh, Uncle 60 suggests that I send Mark Carter a box of jumbo pencils. That's hilarious. Hello, Brenda. Thank you very much. Hello, Vince Y2, YT2 20, 2408. Hi, hey, people. <laughs> I like your first spending, Vince. I like your first spelling, Vince. Uh, Vince asks a question when it comes to... Um, uh, When it comes to acrylic painting, is there any tr any treatment of the canvas necessary? Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, in fact, with acrylics, you could paint if you wanted to. You could paint on a completely bare naked, um, you know, cotton duck canvas canvas um, without without gesso or anything. Because in fact, gesso is largely uh, acrylic paint, at least in the modern in the modern world. Uh, gesso is in fact a, an acrylic based product. That's why even sometimes there's a debate among artists about whether whether we all should be painting oil on top of on top of acrylic. You know, will it will it stand up in, archivally? When in fact m the great majority of people are in fact already doing that because the, the great majority of artists are in fact painting in oils on top of a uh, acrylic gessoed canvas. Now, not all, of course, because some of, some of you know better than that, and you're, you're painting um, on an oil gessoed canvas, but that's the exception. And I'm convinced that the great majority of people who are painting in, acryl in oils are in fact painting on an oil gesso canvas. So anyway, Vince, to answer your question, no, uh, acrylics are extremely friendly in that regard. That you can certainly paint uh, on no preparation needed on a canvas. You can paint on the canvas that you buy at a store off the shelf, you know, stretched, pre-stretched, of course, is already gessoed, stretched and gessoed. Um, do I stretch my own canvases? The answer is only when I have to. So for instance, the other painting I'm working on yesterday and today, this one for, for um, um, Buddy, is, is a custom size. It's 22 by 30. And it is that size largely because we're fitting a very specific and particular spot on the wall of his bedroom. And uh, actually, Buddy, I, I didn't mention this to you, but I actually gave that issue a considerable amount of thought. I considered, you know, 20 by 30 is very close to that, uh, and, and a number of other options. You gave me some parameters, and, and uh, I concluded that your estimation, your eye was, was actually correct, that 20 by 30 would be, would be too skinny, too, too tall and narrow skinny. So, uh, I actually did consider several options and finally concluded that no 22 by 30, which is one of the sizes that Buddy suggested, was in fact the, the ideal shape and size for that particular paint. So that, that canvas, 
all I'm trying to say is that canvas, I in fact did have to custom stretch. So I think, I, I mean, my impression is that all real artists, all, all painters um, have to have to stretch their own canvases occasionally. Um, it's just a, a pain. You can't do it as cheaply as the, the ones we buy off the shelf that are probably all stretched by political prisoners in China. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he went dark all of a sudden. He went dark really fast. Okay, we don't, we won't, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, I do think about it all the time when you buy stuff off the shelf that is so dang cheap. You think, how do they do it this cheap? Oh, it's easy. <laughs> you just capture half the country, put them in prison and work them to death. It's real easy, real easy. Lord help the Chinese. Oh, the ones that are in prison, I mean. And the ones that are putting them in prison help them too. The perpetrators and the perpetrated. <laughs> All right, isn't that kind of fun? Some real fun, fun energy happening here. Energy is the word. It's one of the words I use most often. When, when deciding, you know, what, how to paint, what to paint, how to, how to, I don't mean what to paint, like subject matter, I mean when I'm painting, whether to put a mark there or no, whether to, whether to make that mark or not. The, the, one of the chief, the word I use more than any other is just that, energy. Lots of really fun energy happening in here. The painting looks good uh, before, I, before I started this process. I am uh, happy to say I believe it, it looks even better now. I've increased the energy considerably, especially on the car and in this area right here. Okay, I think I'm done with that now. less energy now because I'm getting close to the edges of the painting. I, I don't need to draw a whole lot of attention over there so my drawing over there is much more abstract and messy. Same thing here. All right the final thing that I really need to do here is these power lines. Um, let's talk about the power lines in this painting are a major element in the, in the scene, in the, in the subject. Um, that was a bad stroke. I mean, it'll, I'll fix it, but it's a little bit over much. Um, um, power lines like this are when there's just many of them, it is a, what I call a highly repetitive motif. That is to say it's a shape that's repeated over and over and over, right? Are you with me? There's a lot of them. Uh, this, is, this is Dan Nelson. You hear it all the time if you follow me at all. Um, therefore, it behooves me, it is required, anytime you have a highly repetitive motif, and in this case, the, the that motif that I'm talking about is the, the power lines, the wires going across the sky. Therefore, whenever you have a highly repetitive motif, it is required of the painter that he or she render those objects, shapes, that repetitive thing in many different techniques. Okay, now just as you look at it right now, uh, the wires in the sky are rendered, number one, by positive dark marks in acrylics, two, by negative painting, white painting around the dark marks, and I've done that two, repeated that, so three, four, that's four different renderings, and just now I did pencils. So at the moment, I have employed five different techniques, five distinct separate layers to render these 
clouds, uh, clouds to render these wires. And uh, the next thing I will do is draw with dark paint. That will be six for some of these. Then I'll paint in the negative. That'll be seven. And then I'll do a glaze and da -da 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 -da. there will be at least one more rendering and probably two. So when I'm finished, I will, oh no, and then there will be some palette knife. When I'm finished, these wires in the sky will have been rendered or painted 10 different times in 10 different ways. Now, I mean, 10 different ways. I've repeated a, a process a couple times, but not back to back. Does that make sense? Anyway, just to give you an idea uh, that the, those wires will be accomplished, rendered, drawn, painted in the painting, utilizing 10 different steps, okay, eight different techniques in 10 steps, just for what it's worth, in case you want to know. All right, I am done with the pencil. So the next thing, I, next thing on both paintings is to come up with small brushes. I'm going to not do that right now. The smallest brushes I've used thus far, pretty small, number two and number three. And by the way, yes, when I'm painting with two hands, I usually do, I'm very intentional about having a different size brush in each hand and often a different color in each, on each brush, slightly different color. All right, but it's time to go, I think, and uh, I hope to bring you guys back in when I do the next step. Thanks so much for watching. Any other comments I need to talk on? <clears throat> yes, it's Uncle Sixty, you're correct. The, the 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 canvas needs to be primed for oil, right? Right. So if you're if if you're using using acrylic, make sure you cover the whole canvas. If but anyway, just acrylics, you don't need to prime the canvas. But if you're doing oil on top, you do. I don't think you can oil prime that. That's correct. You cannot. You cannot do acrylics on top of an oil primed canvas. That is correct. You are correct, Susan. Exactly. All right. Thanks, guys. Love you. Talk to you soon. I hope. Bye.